Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about DLS and frame generation. And I'm going to go over my thoughts and opinions about such things, such tech, what I think of them in a nutshell. And um, I don't know, we're going to try to come to a conclusion here. Okay. So when I was first introduced to the tech, uh, it was on a 3070. And I was sitting there, I'm like, okay, this is pretty cool. Uh, this just gave me free performance. It didn't look good. And yeah, there was free performance. I mean, that's that's a good thing, right? You get free performance, you think, oh, this is the greatest tech in the world. It's not. It's honestly holding back. Uh, gaming as we know it, unfortunately. And it's, it's a sad thing. Now, before everyone starts crying in the comments, what's the point of this? Blah, 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 blah. Nothing's ever going to change. Would anything change? Like I always say when I do videos like this, nothing is ever going to change. Okay? If you're not willing to stand up and make a change. Let's be completely honest. And no one's going to. No one will stand up and make that change. Why would they? It takes too much time, too much effort on their part, right? So here's what Tim Sweeney said. And I'll probably put it on the screen somewhere. And if I forget... Uh, he pretty much goes over the point that Unreal Engine optimization in the current titles is because they're building the, the, the game on the highest end card first, and then they're optimizing later or not optimizing at all. And he's right. And what they need to be doing is building the game from the ground up on the lowest set of end hardware they can get. Think of the Steam Deck or... Like uh, like a 1050 Ti, okay? That would be the best way and place to go. But unfortunately, due to all of this, they choose not to. And it's, you know, it's, it's kind of disappointing when you see that. Uh, that they're not willing to compromise or do the right thing. So instead, they just build on the highest end hardware possible. They optimize a little bit and they call it quits. And this is the reason Silent Hill 2 Remake ran so poorly on all hardware. It still does. It ran. It runs poorly on all hardware. Even my 9070 XT had issues with it, uh, and it needed like frame generation and FSR4 to run properly. And it's sad. It's sad to see that we can't run the games at our native resolution without having to make compromises, especially with hardware as powerful as they are these days. What should be happening is there should be no excuses at all. Silent Hill 2 Remake, considering what it was underneath the hood, uh, how much was being put on the screen, how much was being rendered, it should have run at about 100 FPS for like everybody from low to high. It doesn't really matter. Maybe a lot more on the lowest end side. On the highest end side, uh, let's say 50, 70 up or 3070 up you shouldn't have had any vram issues because the textures weren't really that good and it should have been fully playable without an issue at like 150 plus fps without frame generation without dlss everyone blames the engine everyone blames the engine and this is this is a problem i have because if you have ever stepped into unreal engine before you will know that it's ridiculously easy to optimize any scene. They have all the tools in the world to do so. They have certain viewpoints that show when a mesh is optimized or when it's not. And there's multiple different techniques that you could have done in the beginning to get things working and working well. Stalker 2 developers decided to build a game off of a really bad busted version of Unreal Engine. This thing was a mess from day one. I remember going into Unreal Engine 5, the first version, be like, this is so cool. And then going into 5.1 and being like, what the f did they do? Because it was broken. It was actually extremely broken. 5.2, 5.3, 5.4, they fixed most of the issues with 5.1. 5.1 was a major regression in performance and visuals, and it sucked. So 5.4 is what they're moving to, and they plan to optimize to hell it back. Now, if this actually happens, I will be surprised. 
But here's the thing. I tried Stalker 2 recently. All the CPU optimizations they've been doing, all the optimizations, they're coming together. Uh, on my 5070 Ti, DLAA, okay, that's a form of AA using DLSS, which I'm fine with, and no frame generation, I was running at 100 to 110 to 120 FPS. That, that is pretty damn good, but the game still looked like crap because, again, 5.1 is garbage. There's nothing you can really do about that. And I was sitting there thinking to myself, is this, this is where we are. This is really where we are, and this is where we're probably going to be for this foreseeable future, and it's sad. I don't like frame generation. I, I find it, honestly, dishonest. And I get it that most people's brains will just accept it as it is. We'll think, oh yeah, I'm definitely getting more FPS because, like, there's frames being inserted. No, you're not. No, you're not. No. <laughs> While it may seem like it, why it may make the feeling a little bit smoother, you notice. If you really open up your eyes, you'll notice the artifacts, you'll notice the many issues that still exist. Uh, you'll notice the latency, the frame pacing is off. If you look at the the, 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 the frame times, it, it's it's kind of bad. And it's, it's really disappointing. Uh, for those who don't know, uh, they know that I do Linux videos and stuff, but before that, I did Unreal Engine stuff. I would make massive open worlds that ran ridiculously well on GPUs that shouldn't have been able to run these massive open worlds. At one point, I built an entire world in 11 minutes. That was fun. That was done on Linux, though. But I, I've done other optimized scenes. I've pushed things to the limit. And again and again and again, it's always this. Fill it with as much crap as you can, make it look as dense as you can, change the lighting, do everything possible, and then you optimize. And don't just optimize for yourself. I had a secondary GPU I would put in and I would optimize for, and I would end up coming out with 60, 90 to 100 FPS, 120 in the end, and it was absolutely brilliant. And that's the thing that they don't really tell you is that these developers are not really doing much. Uh, when people make open worlds, they make these really super complicated terrain systems and they don't end up working out very well in the end unless you add great LOD systems. Nanite is not what they said it was. It's not. And I'm learning this more and more as I go through and I watch uh, channels uh, that go over these things and I'm just sitting here thinking to myself there's a lot more that I could have done uh, so in terms of realism Unreal Engine games have a certain look to them uh, on not counting Silent Hill F okay they change the rendering and how that works and everything like that but Unreal Engine games usually have a very plasticky weird look to them uh, Lambert rendering as it's called and I don't like it and after I seen the examples between Lambert and other rendering techniques I'm just saying to myself is this why I had to go through so much work to make things look better and back in the day it was kind of just like yeah throw something together hope for the best I couldn't do that I had to be meticulous I had to go through and I had to make things look as close to realistic as possible to make me happy and uh, I would sacrifice a little bit here and there about that, but I got it done and it, it made me happy. And a lot of my scenes and stuff, a lot of my videos are still up. If you ever want to go look at them, they're on Unreal Engine 4. I have done some Unreal Engine 5 videos, but they don't feel quite right. And I don't know why. But now that I have this new NVIDIA GPU, I should be able to go through, jump back into Unreal Engine 5.7 and get back to what I like doing without any upscaling, which would really make me happy because I would like to make a series on how to optimize games in Unreal Engine and hope that maybe some developer who's working at some AAA studio sees it and be like, okay, let's see what this does. And they actually get it done because you can optimize Nanite pretty far. There are optimization settings. Most developers won't follow them. They're too busy following the documentation that Epic leaves behind because they think that this is going to get them the best results. It's not. 
Epic does not know how to optimize their own stuff. This is why uh, Fortnite looks like garbage. All right, this is why they use the most simple rendering techniques imaginable and they just go with it because they don't know how to optimize their own crap. Uh, the techniques that they give you are usually just mm, the lowest common denominator. And I don't know what to tell you. It's just not, it's not very good. It's not just about Epic. There are other engines that are also currently uh, not doing the best that they can. But when I played Silent Hill F for the very first time, I was blown away. Not by the gameplay. The gameplay, the, the, the gameplay's crap. I was blown away by the fact that it ran so goddamn well compared to Silent Hill 2 Remake. And it's like they've learned a lesson. And I wish, I hope, I really, really do, they take what they learned and they end up porting it back to Silent Hill 2. Like a big ass update comes out, the whole game just comes out super optimized and ready. And we can finally run it without DLSS because that's what I did. I ran it without FSR or DLSS and it ran amazingly well and it looked better than any Unreal Engine game I've ever seen. It was so clean and defined and I loved it. But it had problems on consoles, as most things usually do. Bandos, chest plate, playing RuneScape, you just can't see it. This is a talking head video. So. I don't know if you guys care enough, but what if we could make a change? And it would have to start in the UK. It would have to start in Europe, like uh, stop killing games movement type thing, where we force developers to optimize for the lowest common denominator, changing the history and development of gaming forever. Now, I have no idea how to start this whole thing. That's the problem. But, I wouldn't mind supporting it. Because there's a lot of important things that need to happen in the next couple of years to be able to save gaming as a whole. Remakes are fine, but it would be nice if they remade the game and they decided to build in all the extra content that they never got the opportunity to put in. You know what I mean? Like how Silent Hill 2 Remake was somewhat of a different game. Most people don't know that, by the way. They changed a lot in Silent Hill 2 Remake from the original game. And also, honestly, I'm happy about that. I played the original and it wasn't very good because of the controls, the movements, and everything else. but. I, I kind of have a soft spot for this remake. I don't know. I really, really do enjoy it and like it. And I know I'm probably not the guy for this, but as someone who's completely self-taught in CryEngine bleh, Unity, sorry, and I was starting to, lo to uh, learn Godot and uh, completely self-taught in Unreal Engine, Four and five, uh, self-taught Maya, 3ds Max, Substance Painter, and a whole bunch of other programs, ZBrush included. I just think that maybe now is the time to kind of fight back and say that this is not acceptable anymore. But I doubt anybody will bother. That's the thing. People seemed content in their own little hell. I'm not content whatsoever. I see games like Metro Exodus, which don't need DLSS at all to run amazingly well, even with full ray tracing. And I'm just looking at it and I'm like, the magic they must have pulled to get this to work is insane. And they do, they're optimization gods over there at 4A. And when Metro 2036 comes out, I'm going to be blown away, hopefully. They love upgrading their engine. Metro Exodus is one of the most optimized, brilliant made games I've ever seen. And it makes me happy. It just honestly makes me happy. That's why I keep going back to it. It just 
feels like developers don't care anymore. They don't. They've taken so many shortcuts and they just don't care. Now there are other people that are trying to change the industry, but I don't think they're trying to do it for the reasons which I have said. They seem to be doing it to make money and not actually, you know, change the industry as a whole. They talk about, you know, optimization, optimization, optimization. There's multiple channels that do it. They just don't follow through. I think they care more about Patreon money than they do actually making a change because I've not seen uh, any industry changing things happen. Many of the videos that they've done, but they keep claiming they have and it's just a bit weird. So, I don't know. Someone needs to do something. And I think the, the UK government would probably be the best bet. They will literally go after anyone for anything. Uh, they love that clout more than anyone. Uh, they forced Apple to change most of their policies, which was amazing. They put Google in the place, which was amazing. And, you know, stop killing games this is going to actually hopefully do something. So, uh, yeah. I am not a fan of DLSS as a replacement for optimization. I am never going to be a fan of frame generation or uh, interpolation to begin with. Interpolation hurts my head. I hate it. But, I don't know. I think it would be nice to look the industry in the face and just be like, no, we want change. We want our games to be fixed. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I'll see you guys in the next video. Uh, if you want to support the channel, you can become a member by clicking the join button below this video. Subscribing helps as well. Liking the video and leaving a comment always helps. And uh, let's try not to be cynical. Let's try to be a little more optimistic about this stuff. Let's actually have a conversation instead of giving up immediately and being like, uh, there's no point because that's how nothing ever changes. And I want things to actually change. And I know you guys do too. Bye, everybody.